Hello YouTube, Dakota from Bowtie Media here, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, well, where we uh, go over This Week in EDM, songs that came out this week in EDM, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, a pretty solid week, I think, in my opinion, there's about 25 songs I want to talk about this week, so let's hop into it. As always, there is a link for a Spotify playlist that has all the songs below, make sure you sort by recently added. Um, let's hop into it. Uh, no songs in trash this week, but we do have a couple in bad, and just remember, again, these are my opinions on stuff, do not take this as gospel truth. Um, but the first song in the back category, we've got uh, Quintino and Mike Williams with Let Me Be Your Fantasy. Uh, this is kind of just your run of the mill, big room house track. Nothing to write home about. Didn't think it was that great. Uh, that is that. Uh, then we've got Excision and Amity with Next to You. Um, nothing about this track feel like it flowed to me. The drops felt like they got forced into, like we were forced into the drops. Uh, the vocals felt a little dry. The final outro was a halftime copy-paste from so many other dubstep tracks out there. Um, just a bit of a mess for me personally. So uh, that's how I feel about that. Up next, uh, sadly, and I think for the first time ever for both these artists, uh, we've got Infraliminal by Res Mouse 5. Or, wait, that was bad to say. Uh, Res Mouse. Uh, is, I was just realized, the first time I've said that. Is that how it's pronounced? Um, uh, yeah, so it's Dead Mouse and Res with a new alias, which I'm interested to see if Dead Mouse and Res are going to do more of this because they created a whole new alias and it's not just Dead Mouse and Res, similar to the way that KX5 was Cascade and Dead Mouse. But um, Res Mouse, yes. Uh, this is kind of a pseudo remix of a decade old track from Dead Mouse, this super liminal track from uh, album title goes here back in, ooh, I want to say 2012, I think the album was. Um, but uh, honestly, though, this song really isn't it. I thought the first half was a bit of a bore and the second just didn't flow. Uh, the first time, yeah, in a while that I just feel like these artists just didn't really land for me. Um, I don't know. It, I'm intrigued to see if this is really going to be something more, but it, this track I didn't it not enjoy. So sadly, that's that. Then we've got Nervo, Plastic Funk, and LAV, uh, LAV with uh, Crazy, uh, a cover of Gnarls Barkley's Crazy that I remember went in, I remember, I remember that song. Uh, and, uh, you know, otherwise it's a simple commercial house track to a classic tune that uh, really did not need to have a remix done because um, it took out all the soul of the original, all the Gnarls Barkley soul of the original. So, uh, yeah, not, not a huge fan of that one. And uh, next, we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought uh, were meh. Uh, we've got Medusa and Janessi Janice with Ecstasy from the new Medusa album. The first, I believe, am I crazy in thinking this is their debut album? Am I? I might be crazy. But a new Medusa album is out now, self-titled. And uh, this is just a simple big room house track with, um, yeah, just a standard beat to it that uh, is <laughs> honestly an upgrade from their other from some of their other stuff that I have not enjoyed. But uh, this is. If anything, just a little boring, and I think it's that. Then we've got William Black and Elenium featuring Elena Springsteen with My Own Advice. Uh, a bit of a nothing burger from William Black and Elenium here for me personally. I do appreciate the more kind of purely acoustic approach to the verses here, which I think was very much uh, because of uh, having Springsteen's daughter, I believe, here. And so, yeah, I just feel like, I just feel, yeah, feel like this track is nothing for me personally. I've never been a huge fan of um, what they've done uh, recently, so... They've got Fred again and Josie with 10, a uh, bit of a house R&B fusion with this new track. Uh, it's calming and relatively simple, and I think it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's meh. They got Drinks on Me and Katie Bossworth with Free Together. Their first track they had together I thought was phenomenal, uh, but this one very laid back and reserved, which is not very common from Drinks on Me, I find, and um, similar to the uh, On My Own track with Lenny and William Black, this is a little bit more vocally driven uh, with Katie's performance being uh, more forefront of the actual track. So uh, it was almost ballad-like, I would say. It's not very, it isn't a ballad. It is a kind of standard garage track from Drinks on Me, but it feels like one. I think that makes sense, but uh, they've got a fun one. This is Grey and Virtual Riot with Raven. Uh, honestly, th yeah, this is just a collab between uh, an artist that I deeply respect and one I deeply despise. Uh, and in the end, I really don't know where I land, honestly. Um, at one time I listened to the song and I'm like, wow, Grey's vocals and narrative lyricism is horrible and this sounds horrendous. And then the next time I listen, I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. And the production's kind of sick. And then the next time I listen to it, I'm like, actually, the production's kind of bland. And then, I don't know. This one's a weird one for me and I think it's just going to land in meh. 
please let me know what you think of that one specifically. And then we got Jessica Autofred with Stay With Me. Uh, not too hot on this track personally. The two drops felt so distant sonically from one another. Uh, they just felt like two totally different songs. And um, yeah, other than that, this was fairly standard dubstep in my eyes, uh, but not too bad. Then we've got Company with Strapped, a similar vein there with this kind of, I would say, fairly standard dubstep to me. And uh, but yeah, just above average, I would say, a cut here. Um, nothing earth shattering. Really like the second movement, but found the first and third to be a little bit more standard in its structure and approach. Uh, then we've got a spicy meatball. This is Bad Computer featuring Raymond Ravel and Marcus McGarty with Electric. Um, lots of talk in the community about it being just over two minutes at two minutes and nine seconds, I believe. And, uh, yes, I have my own gripe with the short song length here, but, uh, in the end, I think, uh, the production was actually just a little bit more linear from Bad Computer. It didn't really have that oomph and power that I kind of know from a Bad Computer track. And, um, I hate to say this, it kind of sounds like it's a demo track a little bit. And the length does play a part into that. It feels like a little bit of an unfinished track to me. Um, in a vacuum, I might feel differently about this track, but I know what Bad Computer is capable of and i know what a phenomenal bad computer track sounds like so it will just land in meh for me so uh, that's another spicy meatball one personally but they're moving into good uh, songs that i think are pretty solid this week and uh, we've got daniel levi with getaway um the 1402 lp is out now on ncs the daniel levi i believe debut lp um this is another grooving electro pop track uh, similar to the singles that have been released up to this point and uh, yeah it's got some fun instrumentations throughout uh, fun instrumentation throughout as well uh, a bit of a bop so i like this one then we got Fabian Mazur with Knockout. Uh, this sounds a lot like what Night Punk did with the Human LP that came out earlier this year um, in terms of a kind of breakbeat production with a rap vocal on top. And uh, this one is a good track, but I do think Night Punk just did it so much better. So I, I, I like it, um, but I mean, Night Punk knocked it out of the park with that LP. So personally, I would just go listen to the Night Punk album, but... Uh, yeah, then we've got Camfly and Zeph with Can't Get Over It. Uh, this is a short and smooth track here. It's got a kind of glassy synth on its melody, uh, and it's very pleasing to listen to and very pleasing to the ear. Um, and it's paired with these kind of very serene sounding vocals that I thought worked really well in the mix, and uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I've got Amanu and Zed's Dead with Rush, a relatively simple garage style track from what would be a pretty huge or what is a pretty massive collaboration between these two artists. Uh, but I think everything worked together quite well, uh, quite marvelously. I thought it had great mixing and nice soft vocals as well on this one too. So I liked this a ton. Then we got Peekaboo's Sleepwalker. No, just Sleepwalk, I think. I can't remember exactly, but uh, yeah, final single before an upcoming album, Eyes Wide Shut from Peekaboo. Uh, and this is a very baseline driven dubstep track that feels like a bit of a hybrid between um, bass house and dubstep. And uh, one that I thought worked very well. I've got Eprom's Trust, uh, another just kind of nutty IDM track from Eprom here. Uh, tons of blips and turns for a very, very fascinating listen. And uh, yeah, it's solid IDM, but uh, there's more to come, so stay tuned. Uh, but then we've got Ace Aura and Dead Crow featuring Ronit with Wait For You. Um, a lot is going on in this track, and I mean that in all of the right ways. Uh, dancing around with a bunch of different styles and movement, this track has a little bit of everything for the dubstep enjoyers, and I liked this one quite a bit. Then we've got Flo Dan, Lil Baby, and Skrillex with Peppa. Uh, Skrillex with a drill beat was a very welcome surprise that I feel like in hindsight um, was kind of obvious. It felt like Skrillex would do a kind of drill style beat at some point. Um, the uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I try to put it together. It's Drillex, I think is what uh, someone dubbed it, uh, which is quite funny. But uh, yeah, Flo Dan killed the vocals while well, I thought Little Baby was a little bit lacking. And I'm assuming this is a part of some larger project that we might get at the end of 2023. We'll have to see. Uh, then we got more Kismet with Girls on Bread. Um, I would kind of call this a mixture between color, bass, and house. And so if you want to call it color house, I guess is sort of what I would call this. But uh, yeah, Girls on Bread is uh, pretty silly in its vocal sample of wanting girls on bread. Uh, but production-wise, it is a solid cut through and through. Clean mixing, fresh melodies, and another silky smooth finish over top of the whole thing. Then we've got Caster with on uh, in Fortuni, I would say. Uh, this is a very grand track with an orchestral choir chant and big movements. And this might just be my favorite Caster track to date. Um, it's explosive and beautiful and just has that grandioso feeling to it uh, that I really particularly resonate with. So... 
And then speaking of more IDM from the past, we've got G. Jones with Too Far Gone from the new Paths album, the new Paths LP. Uh, this is groovin' and schmoothin', and it is G. Jones at his finest on this track. A uh, great blend of IDM prowess and simple to follow, follow melody structures make this for a uh, both very fascinating listen and also one that's a little bit more uh, approachable for a new listener. So uh, way to go, G. Jones. That album is nuts. Uh, and our final track of the week is AU5 featuring Danika Nadeu with Summer Days. The Bridges Between LP is out now on Ophelia. And um, it is still kind of crazy to hear AU5 take on such a kind of bright and light style of melodic dubstep. Uh, a little bit more commercialized. But uh, yeah, Summer Days feels like the quintessential, like commercial hybrid dubstep track from AU5. Uh, Tanika's vocals are great. The melodies and the synth licks are fun. Just a very, very good song. Uh, and I'm excited to get into the that full project uh, very soon. But um, yeah, that's been This Week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any and all tracks in the comment section below. But uh, other than that, I'm Dakota from Botet Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.